When you first meet a guy, how do you decide if he's gonna be a friend or more than a friend? And more importantly, when do you decide? Because it's often said a woman will know right away. Oh, I don't know. I like to keep them all as friends for the first little bit. <laughs> Oh, it's another girl telling on herself. I mean, this is so typical, right? Like... <laughs> Women speaking in slip communication like they, like they think we don't understand what it means. I like to keep them all as friends for the first little bit. This is actually a double answer, okay? If you're in the top 5 to 10% of males, um, she'll keep you in the friend zone because um, the guy will not commit right away. And she's going to sleep with them. And if you're lower than that, then she's going to keep you as a friend because you're friend zoned. And she just wants to use you for attention and validation. Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. My name is Helios, here for another reaction video. Uh, please remember to like, comment and subscribe, hitting all for notifications. If you'd like me to comment on a video or compilation, please send it to the Helios blog at gmail.com. Let's continue. So if the vibes are good, then... He can be more than a friend. I <laughs> exactly. If he causes the tingles, then he can be more than a friend. Exactly. I agree. Because if the vibes are good and the energy is good, then you can't really like go wrong. They're just talking about their dualistic mating strategy, right? So the, these girls are talking about how um, if the guy is of high value in her opinion, right? So he is uh, physically attractive. Uh, he makes a lot of money, um, you know, stuff like that, then she's going to want to immediately um, jump jump his bones, right? But if he doesn't, then she's going to want to friend zone him. So there you go. What is the difference between a friend and an acquaintance? An acquaintance is someone that I'm just going to talk to for a day. And probably, if I run into you, I'll talk to you. But a friend, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to check up on you. I care about you. I feel like an acquaintance is just somebody I know. Yeah. You know, and then Sorry, like a friend is somebody I talk to on like a regular basis. Uh, I mean, women have actually okay. So let me explain the meaning of friend from a woman's perspective. Okay, are you ready? If two women are friends, they're not actually friends. How men think about it, they're allies. So they would turn on each other should the situation arise. Oh God, this girl's married. Oh no. Okay. Anyway, um. But if a man is a girl's friend, then, uh, and he's in the friend zone, then she's using him for attention, validation, basically boyfriend behaviors and not giving him any um, bedroom fun. And uh, if he's just a friend, in womanese that means she's uh, friends with benefits with him. So she's uh, sleeping with him and... Uh, uh, she wants to get his commitment, but she just can't. So they're friends. He's just a friend. Don't worry about him. Like her. What does it mean when people say dating is more than friends? I feel like dating, your acquaintance, not your acquaintance, your partner should be your best friend. You're like... Your partner should be your best friend. Let's unpack that, okay? So, first of all, it's a lie. Um... Women say friends first for this reason. They want men to believe that they want to be friends first. And here's why they want men to believe that. Because men who listen to that advice, what they do is naturally select themselves out, out of the human race, right? Um, but not only that. Men who believe in friends first, what they do is they upfront give the woman attention, validation, texting constantly, butler services, repair on the car, um, driving around, taxi cab services, etc. So friends first means that he's providing her with boyfriend stuff while she gets to sleep around with the men she's actually attracted to. So of course women are going to say, I want to be friends first. Also, it makes her look really good on camera because many women will just give a politician answer, right? Makes them look really good on camera to say that they want to be friends first when really they never select men that um, uh, that they do the friends first treatment to. Uh, in fact, they'll call it something different. They'll call it a situationship or uh, they'll say they're dating this guy when they're really not, uh, stuff like that. Friends with many people, but dating is like you only date this person or yeah. you... you sharing more um, of your 
yeah, personality with only one person. Yeah. And You're sharing more of your long pause personality right that's yeah if you're dating you're sharing your more of your personality and nothing else you're totally not in a situationship friends with benefits or anything like that no right we all believe you yes and i definitely wouldn't have like sex with a friend so that is yeah really <laughs> The <laughs> let's let's uh, let's refer to uh, Jerry Springer. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, okay, while it's true that women will not sleep with men that are in the friend zone, absolutely correct. They will one hundred percent sleep with a friend. Oh yeah, you know the don't worry, he's just a friend. Um, he's a friends with benefits uh stuff like that that's where that comes from no no that's the i mean on camera she'll say that she would never sleep with a guy uh, who's a friend but actually uh what what's going to happen is in order to try and secure the commitment of a man who she considers to be superior she will throw um you know uh, bedroom fun at him in an attempt to get him to commit but before he commits he is just a friend so no she'll totally sleep with a friend uh, it, but again the politician answer is i would never sleep with a friend right it's like not possible for me yeah. so uh -huh. would you would you say that the purpose of dating is is sex <laughs> yeah kind of like it's not the main purpose but it is like it goes hand in hand i would say absolutely oh, that's not a lie that they're, they're honest there at least yeah, the, the purpose of dating is bedroom fun. A absolutely. And in fact, uh, I would say that um, basically what it is, right, at least in 2022, what dating has become is women exchanging bedroom fun in an attempt to get commitment from absolute apex men, right? That's, that's what dating has become. And um, basically those apex men are not giving the commitment because they have so many girls that they don't have to and these girls are bouncing from guy to guy to guy right um when they could totally secure the commitment and a relationship from a man who's less um you know let's say valuable or competitive but they don't want that man they want the absolute apex and so many men are uh, are being shared by a vast majority of the women, right? And that's called the Pareto Principle, where 20% uh, of men get 80% of the female attention. But it's actually more. Uh, it's actually more extreme now. It's more like the top 10 to the top 5% are getting like 95% of the female attention. Something like that in, in the modern world. It's a requirement, I guess you would say. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. If a friend expected you to provide everything, would that be a toxic relationship? Hell yeah. Yes. <laughs> If a friend expected you to provide everything, would that be a toxic relationship? So when he says everything, he's referring to bedroom fun, of course, and women call it toxic. I think these two girls are actually attracted to the interviewer. Based on the the, the way they're looking at him, they find him attractive, that's for sure. Look, both of them. This is, this is what uh, attraction looks like. A good job, uh, interviewer. It means that he works on himself. Anyway, um, but here's the thing. And I'll, I'm, I'm predicting that this is where the line of questioning is going. I've never seen the video, but I'm, I'm assuming he's going to go this way. Um, but when girls are friends with guys, they expect the guy to provide basically everything that men provide in relationships. They expect guys to pay for, you know, dinner. They expect guys to drive them around. They expect guys to, you know, hang out with them, text them, give them validation, give them attention, give them effort, repair their stuff, repair their car, you know, oil change, all, all kinds of butler services, right? Um, so it's really funny that they would call... Uh, a relationship where a friend asks for bedroom fun toxic, but they will not call the backwards relationship, which is the friend zone, uh, they won't call that toxic. And I think that's where the line of questioning is going. But let's let's see here. I, this is my prediction anyway. So why is it considered toxic when friends become users, but it's normal when women expect a man to provide more than just his company? Exactly. A man is a provider. <laughs> of course of course she'd say that a man is a provider right 
this is actually exactly what the what the modern world uh, teaches, right? The modern world teaches the following: men, you are to be providers for us, regardless of how we behave, regardless of how we dress, regardless of how we act, regardless of what we do, regardless of our past decisions. You are to provide for us. But here's the irony. They only give bedroom fun to the men that are not providers, to the men that are the apex, to the men that are top physically attractive um, physical specimen men. They, they give their bedroom fun to those men. And ironically, if you listen to her advice, terrible advice, by the way, if you listen to it, you'll be naturally selected out of the human race. So there you go. There it is. And the reason why she wants, not just her, but, you know, womankind in general, why they want you to believe that you should be a provider in order to, um, why they, they want you to believe that you should be a provider, the reason they want that uh, is because it benefits womankind in general. It, it uh, perpetuates the matriarchy, right, for men to favor and worship women in all things. So there you go. But I think I do think it should be 50-50 equal. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, so here's the classic like politician answer, right? Uh, it should be a 50-50 uh, equal relationship. Uh, no girl is actually attracted to a man uh, when they're in a 50-50 relationship. Women only want men who are superior to them, right? Because of hypergamy. So they might say that they want an equal relationship, but if you as a man agree to and act as though you want an equal relationship, uh, she will feel superior to you. She will use you for attention, effort, resources, and butler services, and she'll go sleep with another man. So again, this is another one of those uh, ideologies that uh, women um, sort of perpetuate, right? But it's it's actually for the benefit of women and not for the benefit of men. So don't listen to that. It's it's terrible advice. Again. From both partners. I agree because if you don't have any part in it, then you're really just not doing anything. And usually your partner would say something to you, but if not, then they usually don't mind. But I think it's 50-50. What? Okay, so what the girl said was gibberish. But uh, I think the implication there is that in her relationships, it's not 50-50. And uh, she doesn't actually understand why the other girl is talking about 50-50. I, I, think, I think she's actually confused because in her relationships, it's never been 50-50 like that. Um, she has always had a superior partner and she doesn't really understand why this girl is, is, uh, is giving this politician answer. I, I think based on her confused expression. Uh, this girl is telling on herself that she's never been in an equal relationship in her life. It's always been the guy has been superior and um, she has accepted it, basically. guy doesn't have to always pay. It should be both parts. A guy doesn't have to always pay. I mean, he doesn't, but there's like a million TikToks out there that say if the guy doesn't pay, then get rid of him or replace him or etc. Okay, this guy's looking a little sketchy with the face tattoos, but let's let's see what we're getting at here. If a friend expected you to provide everything, would that be a toxic relationship? Hell yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love how he asked the man um, if, <laughs> if a girl expected him to provide everything, would that be toxic? But actually, that's kind of how it goes, right? Um, many women out there expect men to provide everything. Um, and if they don't, they're, you know, bad men or not real men or whatever you want to call it. So then why is it considered toxic when friends become users, but it's normal when women expect a man to provide more than just his company? Well, see, if I'm in a very deep, like, oh God, relationship with a man, like, it just means he should be giving his all to me. Well, shouldn't you be? Oh, so, so she's saying if, if she's in a deep friend relationship with a guy he should be giving his all so she is deserving of um more than she's giving yeah and he's he's going to ask the question so why then don't, don't you provide bedroom fun and the reason is because of women's dualistic mating strategy right so women want to sleep with the absolute best genetic guy they can an alpha male uh and while at the same time being provisioned by the best guy they can and if they collect multiple beta males, multiple loser men who are willing to provide everything without her giving them bedroom fun, she is actually favored um, 
in the long term. So that's that's just a demonstration of women's dualistic mating strategy. Okay, let let's move on to a Reddit post here. So my wife is planning to cheat. Classic. So we have been married for eight years now and have a three-year-old daughter. There have been instances in the past where my wife has lied about her friendship with co-workers, but I genuinely thought that we turned a corner around during the pandemic, but it appears that it's not the case. Men, here is the truth, the sad, hard truth. If the girl has cheated on you once, she will cheat on you again. So, if she cheats on you, she ends the relationship. And if you stick around, all you're doing is you're bleeding dry your own self-respect. So, you cannot stay in such an arrangement. And this thing here where he sticks around to try and work it out, um, that is the absolute worst thing you can do. And it, it's terrible. It's absolutely a tragedy that they have a child because the child is the one that actually gets hurt by the wife's bad decision, right? So basically, again, it's the dualistic mating strategy, right? The wife has a nice beta male provider. She's had a kid with him. She, now that male is forced to stick around and provide her of, uh, for her forever. And now she's going to go and secure the alpha genes that she, that she wants, right? And I will be willing to bet money that this woman is over 35. Um, and that she married and had a child with this guy after the age of 30, uh, after the wall, because this is when you get the, the highest amount of disrespectful behavior and when you get bait and switch marriages. Anyway, my wife came to me and said that she'll be having a girl's night with colleagues from work and they've all been stressed from work and domestic responsibilities. So they just wanted to take a break for two days. Uh oh. So you mean they're going to go dancing at a club wearing barely any clothing f to gain the attention of other men? Wow, say it ain't so. And they're going to sleep with those men because they're taking a break for two days? Yes, you should totally, as a guy, accept that. Totally. You should totally allow a girl to disrespect you like this and treat you like dirt because she's feeling, in quotation marks, stressed from work and domestic responsibilities. What a mess. She's supposed to go on Friday night right from work and will return on Sunday evening slash night. I was more than happy for her to unwind and have fun. The last two years have been stressful for everyone. Ben, please, for the love of God, please, please, never let this man be you. Don't allow your girl to go on girls night out. This is literally, this is literally one of the relationship rules, one of the fundamentals. No girls night out. Because what are women doing when they go on girls night out? They're going to a place where there's a bunch of sweaty single men and they're going to get inebriated and wear little clothing. Do you see what I'm saying? She's literally auditioning another male to take your place. She's interviewing your replacement by going on girls' night out. So if you allow this, you're basically allowing her to, to, to destroy you. So how could you possibly say yes to this? It's, it's, a, it's a travesty. But I met the husband of the co-worker in whose house she's supposed to stay and they're going out for a weekend trip. So I thought her trip might be cancelled, but no. My wife came home and explained how excited she is for her getaway during the weekend. Wow. So she's going to stay at a co-worker's house for two days and call it girls' night out? This is ridiculous, guys. I, I <laughs> guys, I don't even know if life is comedy or tragedy at this point. Like, how could this possibly be, like, a real story? This, this must be fake. There's no way. Like, this this is so utterly ridiculous that a man would allow this to happen. And the, the lack of self-respect that it shows, it just, it, guys, it, it kills me. Never let this be you, please. So now I have two options before me. 
One, confront her and maybe she doesn't cheat now, or let her go and be sure once and for all. I can't really decide what to do here. What's the best way to handle the situation? Well, before I read the comments, the best way to handle the situation is to um, kick her out. Well, can't because they have a child. Um, get a lawyer. Sorry, your relationship's over. The level of disrespect this implies is just absurd. I, I can't even I can't even believe that this is actually happening. Anyway, let's re let's read some comments and see. If you confront her now, she'll deny, claim her friend is leaving town only, uh, just came to the attention and are going to go on a different day instead. Then she'll hide better next time. If you let her go, she'll come back happy but tired on Sunday and will probably do the laundry. You won't be able to prove anything. If you have access to a phone and you can look for a message and explain what's really going on. Uh, if you don't have access to a phone, the only way you can catch her is, is to track her in some way. And you can't just follow her from work because it's quite likely the real getaway starts that mon morning and she phones in sick to work or something. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, what what the guy is talking about in the comments, like, there's no need to track your girl or to, you know, stalk a phone or anything like that. Like, guys, at that point, it's already done. So, do this. Let her go and have divorce papers waiting on the table when she gets home. Literally. That's, that's the only option. Okay. Okay, so there you go. Anyway, uh, I think we'll end the video here. Uh, remember, please, if you're liking the videos, please subscribe. Also, leave me comments if you like uh, or agree or disagree with, with some of the things that I'm saying. Uh, please, that's what the comment section is for. All right, thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Please remember to do all of the following. Like the video for the algorithm. Comment on the video. I respond to all comments and I'll give you a heart. Subscribe and hit the bell so you can see my content on your feed. Check out all of my content on other platforms. It spreads the reach of the channel. YouTube, bit.ly slash Helios YouTube. Rumble, bit.ly slash Helios Rumble. My blog is realheliosblog.com. My podcast, bit.ly slash Helios Podcast. My Patreon, patreon.com slash the Helios Blog. You can also support the show at bit.ly slash Helios Donations and buy my books at bit.ly slash Helios Books. Thank you so much for all of your support.